So it's all over for another year. Yes, it's time to put away the Christmas tree, pack away the Christmas lights and wave goodbye to Santa Claus because Christmas is over for another year. However, there is still one more celebration that we have to observe and that is the new year yes 2019 is just around the corner how will you celebrate the new year what are your plans for next year do you have anything special planned for the new year maybe today you can share it with us and of course we will be doing the same thing by we I mean me Mr Duncan and Mr Steve as well also today we'll be taking a look at some of the highlights of 2018 we are all here together on the live chat after all it's a Sunday afternoon it's just after two o'clock here in the UK it's New Year's Eve Eve and this is live English live from much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon this is live English yes another year is coming to an end but don't fear because a new one is just around the corner Yes, the day after tomorrow, everything will be fine as we say hello to 2001 9. 2019 is just around the corner, and we are getting very excited here in Much Wenlock because we like to welcome in the new year with lots and lots of fireworks. Hi, everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy are you excited for the new year i really hope so here we go kaboom bang whiz fizzle it's new year's eve eve it is the day before the day before the new year I hope you are well and happy today how was your Christmas did you have a good Christmas was it nice did you see our live broadcast on Boxing Day we were here live on Boxing Day right in the town center of the place in which we live much Wenlock and we were there on Boxing Day we did our special live stream lots of fun and excitement there were many people walking around on when was it Wednesday so Wednesday was Boxing Day and there are lots of people walking around at that time and they were asking lots of questions they asked Mr Steve to take a photograph of them there were there was a family there and they wanted Mr Steve to take a picture and there were some other people they came up to ask what are you doing is it for the television so they thought we were from the BBC well almost almost the BBC so here we go oh my goodness 2019 is just around the corner are you excited for the new year now at this time of year lots of people make plans for the new year they make New Year's resolutions yes they do So another year has come to an end and once again a new one has begun. For many people this time represents an opportunity to make changes. These alterations can be small or big. You might want to make a change in your behavior. 
there may be a habit you wish to break, such as smoking or drinking alcohol. Perhaps you want to pursue a change of career. Maybe there is someone you wish to get back in touch with, such as a long-lost friend, or maybe a close relative with whom you have had a row and fallen out with. For many of us, the coming of a new year brings a fresh start. The plans we make for the new year are called resolutions. They are the things you have resolved to change, the changes you plan to make, the habits you wish to stop or break. They are your New Year resolutions. Of course, making resolutions is easy. The hardest part is sticking to them. Many of us find it hard to realize these plans. We have the intention, but not the willpower to fully carry them out. The word willpower refers to your inner strength, your determination to carry out your plans. To make the big changes in your life, you really do need lots of willpower. Resolutions are not only made at the beginning of a new year. We may also set goals for ourselves as we celebrate our birthday. Becoming another year older reminds us that life is short, and with the passing of each year, the time left to carry out our plans becomes less and less. Rather like watching the sand slip through an hourglass, each birthday gives us a much-needed jolt to stop talking and start doing. Of course, the older you get, then the more intense this feeling becomes. Do you ever make New Year resolutions? What were they? Were you able to achieve any of them? Did you fail to carry any of them out? Why do you think that happened? Was it your fault? Whatever your plans are for the future, I hope they all become reality for you. I wish that all your brightest plans will come to fruition. May your resolutions, be they big or small, come true for you. That is all from me for today. Thank you for watching me teaching you. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying, "Enjoy the year," and of course, ta-ta for now. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you just yet. We've only just begun, as the carpenters once sung. So it's Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to improve your listening skills. Yes, we are here on New Year's Eve Eve. What about you? Have you made any plans yet for 2019? Is there anything you would like to achieve or to improve on? During the next year, which is just a few hours away, oh my goodness, are you excited? I don't know why. I always feel a little bit apprehensive, a little bit worried, a little bit afraid at this time of year as the new year approaches. I don't know why. I always have a strange feeling in my stomach that that maybe some big change will occur. During the following year, anyway, a year from now, this time next year, we will all find out what happened during 2019. We were talking about Christmas on Wednesday. We did a special live stream from Much Wenlock, and as promised, I said that I was going to show some of my Christmas presents, and also Steve will be doing the same thing as well. First of all, let's have a look outside. Now, I know that behind me in the studio it looks like it's snowing, but outside it is definitely not snowing. It's already starting to get dark. Can you see? So here in England it gets dark at around about three thirty, four o'clock, because we are now into mid-winter. We have a few more weeks of winter. Although, having said that, it's very warm here today. It's so warm. It's about thirteen degrees today. It feels quite nice outside. 
in fact yesterday I went outside in just my shirt I didn't have a coat on at all and it was really really mild so we are having some very unseasonable weather at the moment some very unseasonal weather so it's very mild no snow no rain just lots of cloud <sighs> and of course a lot of joy because this time of the year is very exciting mr steve received a very big present on christmas day santa claus was very generous to mr steve would you like to have a look at one of mr steve's presents that he received here it is now look at that now that is a big box that's a very large box but i wonder what's inside and which generous person bought it for him mm, i wonder who it could be i wonder who who is so generous and kind that they would buy such a large present for mr steve so we will find out all about that a little bit later on what is inside mr steve's box mm, i'm very intrigued of course we have to mention the live chat because the live chat is what it's all about you are here to improve your listening skills and you can join in as well on this live stream don't forget we are here every sunday live english every sunday at 2 p.m uk time and of course if you want to make a donation on the live chat or via paypal there it is there is the address now going across the screen thank you very much we've just had an actual donation come through on the live chat and i will mention that in a moment because we are talking all about the live chat yes that is the reason why we are here well done to martha martha poland who says hello mr duncan you are first on today's live chat so congratulations to you <laughs> very nice also we have Connell and Belarusia and also Tomek Pedro is here don't forget Pedro and Belarusia are today's moderators on the live chat Sujin is here as well hi Sujin nice to see you Palmyra also Saturino hello Saturino nice to see you here again also Beatriz Hugh Han Fee also alan gear and also jean hello jean where are you watching at the moment beatriz martha lucas gabrielle anna skolosu anna skoloski oh i like your name by the way i hope i pronounced it right rosa pow b tias is here hello tias and can i say a special hello to everyone watching in indonesia i know that there have been a few problems major problems in indonesia caused by one particular natural event and i have been thinking about you hiroko is here as well hello from malaysia my daughter who works in london is on board coming to Kuala Lumpur oh I see so Hiroko your daughter is actually heading back to Malaysia right now how is she getting back is she going back by plane I think so also Paulette hello Duncan I'm Paulette from Brazil I wish you and Steve a happy new year yes I hope so I hope we have a happy new year who knows what will happen during the next 12 months anything could happen also Fouad is here Azerbaijan oh hello Fouad also we have Pierre hello Pierre bonjour I believe you are in France if I'm not mistaken Rakida is here as well Silvana ENG also Abdul Faz nice to say hello to you as well also we have Francisco Gatsu 
Wow so many people today on the live chat thanks for joining me now I know that many people at the moment are still having their holiday they are still off work and they are not at school so I do appreciate the fact that you are joining me today during your holiday time thank you very much for giving up your precious time just for me also we have Angie hello Angie nice to see you here is it your first time don't forget if it is your first time let me know and I will give you a special hello Julia hello Julia I wish you a lovely new year Mr Duncan and Mr Steve thank you very much for your donation on the super chat that is very kind of you thank you very much Julia also we have Pow B Christian and also we have Mohammed Monica Wow Ute is here hello Ute nice to see you here as well Najib Happy New Year Mr Duncan you are the best English teacher worldwide oh that's very kind of you thank you thank you very much Burlop has sent a donation on the super chat thank you Burlop Happy New Year continue your incredible work I will I will be here next Sunday and of course next Sunday will be the start of 2019 so today we are having the final live stream of 2018 and then we will be back next week with the first live stream of 2019 oh my goodness are you excited I hope so so thank you very much to Burlop for your lovely donation thanks a lot Pierre we are from France yes Mr Duncan you are right oh thank you very much I, I, I made a very wild guess wild guess if you make a wild guess it means you just guess guess you don't have any other information you just make a wild guess you make an estimate you make a wild guess Elga is here hello Mr Duncan thanks for joining me today Thomas is here as well today is my first day chatting with you is it really Thomas nice to see you here and because it's your first time I will give you a special round of applause <laughs> I might even give you some fireworks I might put some fireworks on later because the new year is just around the corner Trong is here Edgar hello Edgar watching in Peru how are you today Anna Rita have you any new teaching project for 2019 well first of all can I say that I will be here during 2019 I'm not going anywhere and don't forget next year is my 13th year so next October I will have been teaching here on YouTube for 13 years so at the moment it's 12 years next year 13 can you believe it hello Mr Duncan hello from Indonesia we have been battered by several natural catastrophes at the end of the year yes I've read all about it I've seen the terrible pictures on the news here in England so yes my thoughts are with you at this time Gabrielle is here as well Karim happy to see Mr Duncan greetings from Algiers oh <laughs> it's suddenly gone it's disappeared Alarov Alarov I love you Mr Duncan I'm from Iraq hello to Iraq and a big hello to everyone watching there so many people on the live chat thanks a lot for joining me also Anna and Alpa hello Mr Duncan I am studying at prep school I've learned a lot of things from you thank you John M says it is my first time chatting but not my first time watching your videos well because it's your first time John I will now give you a round of applause and also some fireworks as well Ooh, look at that you get fireworks and applause so thank you John for joining me today X N 
let's make an educated guess happy new year yes an educated guess is a wild guess you are making an educated guess Tias says oh number 13 is lucky for some people well here in the UK here in England we believe that 13 is unlucky and of course we have Amtul I can see Amtul and Priyanka Priyanka watching in India and I know for a fact that I have lots of people watching in India we will go back to the live chat a little bit later on we are also going to have a review of this year some nice moments I will be sharing with you during today's live stream things that we did during the year do you remember when we went to a special place a place we love going back to every single year and during 2018 we went to this place yet again and this is what happened Mr. Steve has been working out our finances for the year and apparently because of all the money that I've earned from YouTube this year from the generous people at YouTube and of course Google we can actually invest our money into something quite amazing oh Mr. Duncan I've been looking at luxury yachts luxury yachts. luxury yachts just for you and me mr duncan imagine the fantastic lessons that we can produce on board our hundred foot luxury yacht wow it sounds amazing we'll we can, go to monaco we can sail all around the world on our luxury yacht from all the profits that you've made from your youtube channel this yes. year mr duncan anyway there's a nice boat yard here i've been to speak to the owners they've got a fantastic yacht for sale oh okay would you like to see it yes i would i'm, I'm getting very excited it's right behind you mr Duncan I'll let me show you what do you think it just needs a bit of paint that 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 is not a luxury yacht it's all we can afford mr. Duncan I've just realized it's all we can afford I'm sorry I've just suddenly realized we are not making as much money from this YouTube channel as I thought because Google and YouTube don't pay as much money unfortunately well, there's an answer to that there is we'll take a nice walk up that hill and make another lesson straight away and then we'll be millionaires that's a nice <laughs> idea a very interesting idea so now we are going for a walk up that hill over there and i have a feeling it's going to be very tiring so we will see you later Mr. Duncan, don't take so long. This is a lovely spot. Hurry up. Oh, hello. The things I have to put up with. Look how slowy Mr. Duncan is coming up there. I told you he needs to get fit. We're trying to get him to lose weight as well. As you know, don't say anything. Shh. He's a bit sensitive about his weight. Oh, Mr. Duncan, you're here. How wonderful. This is a lovely spot, you know. It's a bit exhausting coming up that steep hill. Oh, this this is this is so tiring, Steve. There's a, there is a bench over there. Can can we go and sit down? 
Yes. Okay. Let's go and sit down on that lovely inviting bench showing that fantastic view of the yes, lake. Please. Oh, hello there. We are on a lovely walk today. We're taking a nice walk, but we are having a little rest at the moment. Mr. Steve has just finished eating his peanut bar. There we go. There Bit we of go. energy. Bit of energy. Because uh, we always like to take uh, some food with us and have a nice rest. Don't we, Mr. Duncan? Well, look what I've got here. This is the uh, instruction. It's a booklet uh, on all the walking trails at Lake Vernwy. That's the place that we are at. And that's the, the most amazing thing about this area. There are so many places to actually walk around. It's huge. Look at all those walking trails. Today, we, there, are one, two, there are five walking trails. They're all colour coded. Yeah. <laughs> and today we are taking the, the Lechwad Du Trail. Oh yeah, the, that's great. I can't wait to see the subtitles <laughs> for that. <laughs> that's Welsh, by the way. And it's the red route. We're taking the red route. The red, red route. Red for danger. If you are going to go in any direction, always follow the red route. But it says here... This is a steady climb and it gives stunning high views looking down on the lake and access to the hills, moorlands, forests and fields. It says there's a moderately steep hill. Moderately. We've just come up. So we've walked for around about three miles and I I'm guessing we haven't got much further to go. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there's just another uh, six miles to go. Mr. <laughs> Six miles? I'm not going six miles. Look, you're trying to lose weight, Mr. Duncan. Look, this is what we've come on this walk for, to help you get fit and lose weight. I am losing weight. See, I haven't given him a peanut bar. I've just I'm, kept them all for myself. During this walk, I have lost weight and also the will to live. <laughs> well, the only weight you're losing is because you keep losing bits of equipment. <laughs> Look what it says here, you see, walking, it gives you some very some smart pieces of advice before you set off on your walk. These are the things that you must bear in mind, you must yes. think about. You must think about these things before you go on a walk. For example... Number one, wear strong shoes or walking boots. Check. Check. Tick that one off. Take warm and waterproof clothing. Oh, I've got my warm clothing. Steve's got some warm clothing. I haven't. I'm ah, just, but I'm... look, I've got a rain poncho. A oh. rain poncho. <laughs> what's a what's a poncho? It's a uh, look. There we go. There's a picture of a lovely lady. Yes. Can't you describe it? It's a plastic waterproof film covering that. If we get caught in a shower, <laughs> we put this poncho on, which is just sort of just covers you. It's basically a plastic bag. Plastic bag that goes over your head. That goes over you. But normally a poncho is something you wear loose over your body. That's so it. you put it over your head and then it just covers your body. Uh, if you if you remember in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker wore a poncho. But Star but apparently Wars. apparently most of the scenes were deleted with him wearing the poncho, but there are a couple of scenes in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker is wearing his poncho. Always have to get something in about Star Wars. It's so boring, Mr. Of Duncan. Of course. Anyway, that's that. That's waterproof clothing. Watch out. Watch out for service vehicles on forest tracks. Yes, don't get run over. Don't get run over. It's very nope. important. I uh, can't see any service vehicles on that track. So I think we're all right for now. So unless they're electric, we'll be able to hear them. Keep on the roads and footpaths. Yes, well, we've got directions there. We are on the road and footpath. There is the road behind us. Can you see the road? There it is. Yeah. Keep dogs under control. That's it. Or, we... in, or in this case, I have to keep Steve under control. Yes, exactly. Are you saying I'm a dog, Mr. Duncan? You are, you are a bit of a dumb animal sometimes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lock your vehicle and leave... Don't leave valuables on display. <laughs> well... The car's at the hotel, so we're safe there. I said we're okay there. We'll Don't in... drop litter. Unless of, course, unless, of course, at the hotel there is a special conference 
for people that break into cars, in which case we might have a problem. Don't drop litter, have fires or barbecues. Don't drop litter. Don't drop litter. Let's see what happens if we do. So there we go. I've had this peanut bar. So, mm, oh, that was delicious. Mm. What a lovely, beautiful spot this is. Mm. Oh. So Steve has just dropped some litter. He is breaking the countryside code. You should never drop litter in the countryside. Nothing's happened. I haven't been arrested. I think we've got away with it. Oh, OK, then. I'll, I'll pick it up. I won't be naughty, Mr Duncan, because we're setting a bad example yes. to your viewers. Yes. So uh, I'll put it back in the bag. Don't forget, we are influencers. We influence the world. We must recycle. Don't swim or paddle in the lake. Well, there's no chance of that because Mr Duncan doesn't like water. I can't swim. And it's too cold anyway. We don't like water. <laughs> camping is not permitted. Camping. So no no camping. Ooh. Ooh. No camping, Mr Duncan. Ooh. So you're not allowed to, uh, to mince around out here in the wilderness. Oh, uh, no camping. Oh, OK, I'm going oh, then. Hang on. It means no. It's, it's, it's camping under canvas. It doesn't mean that kind of camping it's the other type of camping where you overnight in the stars yeah, okay uh the lake is a drinking water reservoir i don't know what well, we know that i don't know why it's told us that by being water efficient you can ensure water supplies are secure there's a picture of a man with a dog does that dog look like it's been kept under control it doesn't it hasn't got a lead on it could just run off at any moment and uh, attack anyone. So they're breaking their own rules by showing a picture of a dog that hasn't even got a lead on. So there we go. Are you, uh, what have you got there, Mr. Duncan? I found a sign. It says, danger, overhead power lines. Well, I can't see any overhead power line, Mr. Duncan. No, I think this has come from somewhere else. Maybe we'll find the power. Well, if we find them, we'll show you. There we go, that's, that's about all I've got to say, really, unless it, people want to know any facts about Lake Vernwy. Well, later on, we will be talking all about Lake Vernwy. And don't forget, I also made a video here, an actual lesson filmed here in Lake Vernwy. Did but I now, was there as well. But now we are going to carry on with our walk. Shall we, shall we carry on? Let's carry on. We'll continue with our walk. Get your bag. Right, let's go. Off we go. See you I'll put this in my pocket. Okay then. Oh. Right, let's go, Mr. Duncan. Yep. Right. Off we go. Bye. Bye. Can you see where we are standing now? We are on the big dam. Yes, the big dam. And there are two uses and two spellings of the word dam, aren't there, Mr Duncan? That is true. First, the thing we are standing on right now is called a dam. Dam, something used for containing water, normally made from stone. And there you can see this dam is holding all this water in. This is the reservoir. The dam contains the water. And there is another use and spelling of the word dam. And it's a form of exclamation. A swear word, an expletive. Normally used when you get very, very angry about something. Yes. Damn, I missed my bus. Damn, I'm late for work. Damn you, Mr Duncan. 
I'm hungry and I want to go to the hotel and have something to eat and you've kept me out here filming for far too long. Oh, OK then. Do you want to go back to the hotel? I'm only joking. I think Steve I, wants I would to... never swear at Mr Duncan. I'm hungry as well, though, to yes, be honest. Good. So shall we go back to the hotel now? Yes. We're going back right now. Do, 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 do. It's a Sunday, it's a fun day, it's time to improve your listening skills. Yes, we are live. For those who are wondering, we are, we are actually taking a look at some of our high points, some of the highlights of our time here on YouTube during 2018. And of course, lots more fun to come during 2019 it's just around the corner talking of people lurking and hiding around the corner here's someone now here he is it's the guy who always likes to hide around the corner and sometimes in the bushes it's mr steve <laughs> well mr duncan hello everybody i don't know what you're trying to suggest or insinuate hanging around in the bushes that doesn't sound very palatable Mr Duncan <laughs> actually we, we, we were both hanging around in the bushes yesterday because we went for a lovely walk so there are lots of trees and bushes near to where we lived so we we had we had a lovely walk yesterday into town and back because the weather was quite nice it's so warm at the moment it doesn't feel like December it feels like early summer it was about 13 or 14 degrees yesterday which is very unusual <laughs> uh, because it was probably about minus three this time last year yeah I know one thing Mr Duncan we've used a lot less fuel uh, to heat the house this year that's it we predominantly use oil to power the central heating system because we can't get gas where we are. I can't. It, it gas apparently gas doesn't go uphill. We haven't got the pipes. <laughs> we haven't got the infrastructure. They haven't put pipes into uh, into where we live, Mr. Duncan. So we don't have gas pipes here. So we have to use a big oil tank instead. But this year, because it's been so mild and warm, we haven't used much oil. And, and, and we did have the log fire as well. And we haven't mm. used many logs either. No. So because it's been so mild, we don't actually have to have the heating on in the house. I would say we've used at least <laughs> a third less oil to heat the house than last year and probably half the amount of logs. Because it, Mr Duncan has probably mentioned this before. When we had that bad winter last year, we had the... the uh, the log fire burning for what was the record how many days I think it was about uh, I want to say 19 days with something like 19 days in a row so for 19 days we had the the log fire in the living room it was lit and burning for 19 days during Christmas last year because it was so cold we had a lot of snow last year this year it's the opposite and don't be fooled by the background See, that isn't real behind me, but <laughs> at the moment outside, let's just have a look out the window Ooh, right yes. now. I've been out there, Mr. Duncan. I will try to make that a little lighter but because because now, of course, it's going dark. It's gloomy out there, Mr. Duncan, gloomy. So when we say gloomy, we mean that there isn't much light. There's a lot less light than there should be. Mr. Duncan's adjusted uh, his camera a bit there, but it's still when you go outside, there's no sun, there's thick cloud. It's a little miserable today. Can, can you uh, see? Can you see in the distance, Steve? Can you see on, on the top left, sorry, top right of the screen, you can see some houses? Oh, yes. Do you know where that is? Uh, is it Little Wenlock? It's Little Wenlock. Ah. It's the sister of Much Wenlock. So at the top of the hill in the distance, you can see some houses. And that place is called... Little Wenlock. So, yes, yeah, so if you're <laughs> in Much Wenlock, you can point a camera 
and see uh, Little Wenlock. Yes, it's which... amazing. We've been there, haven't we, Mr. Duncan? Yes, it's very small. There are no shops there. It's very similar to the place we live, but it's very high up. Very now, high up. Someone told us that it was the highest village in England, but in, apparently it isn't. Oh. <laughs> apparently, it, no, I don't think it is. Perhaps it's the highest village in Shropshire. <laughs> Our phone's going, Mr. Duncan. Someone's well, after us. Let's hope there aren't any emergencies that we need to attend to. That's a strange moment of time there. Strange because as as I've been watching your show until I've come on and and this is what you do, isn't it? At the towards the end of a year, you. I wish you'd give me some warning, Mr. Duncan. Until the end of the year, you tend to look back at what you've done over the last twelve months. You take stock of what you where you've been, what you've done, what you've achieved. And that's what Mr. Duncan's been doing. And he's got a lot of other videos to show uh, about what we did last year. Now, I've got uh, lots of... I'm going to talk about New Year's resolutions. Well, we both are. We want to know what your New Year resolutions are, if you have any. Uh, going to look at a bit of the history of that, how successful people are with it. And then we're also going to look at probably common uh, New Year resolutions and also how to achieve these. What methods or what, what little tricks you can use to make sure you actually do achieve these uh, resolutions. Because statistics show only about, well, less than 20% of New Year resolutions ever actually uh, come true. People just give them give up or it's too difficult, or they forget about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Am I still on camera too, Mr Duncan? You sure are. Well, I don't like it over here. It's a bit lonely. So New Year's resolutions. Now, I have a list here. We're going now back onto the main camera. Turn around now, Steve. Yes, look at that. Give me a warning about that. It <laughs> can't look very professional. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm I, I'm producing this show as well as presenting it. It's very hard work. Trust me. It's not easy doing this. So we have New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions, everybody. Now, I'm going to share some of my New Year resolutions and you're going to talk all about making plans for the new year. Words and phrases connected with that as well. That's correct. I believe. So 2019, 2019 is just around the corner. We have some New Year's resolutions. Here is one of them. Now, this is something that I'm going to continue doing because I have lost a little bit of weight, but I have a feeling maybe perhaps, Steve. Yes, maybe during the Christmas period, I might have put a little bit of weight back on because we've been eating a lot of food this this week. So many vegetables. I can't believe how much vegetables, how many vegetables we have eaten this week. So many. I think we've uh, we've contributed towards uh, the rise in greenhouse gases quite significantly over the last week or so uh, due to all the amount of, of, of high fibre vegetables we've been eating. I think what Steve is Do saying... I need to explain? Yes, I think what Steve is saying is that there have been a lot of farts in the house oh, and crude. also a lot of a lot of pooping as well. I don't think I've I don't think I've pooped so much this week because of, ever in my life we've eaten so much so much vegetation carrots potatoes parsnips parsnips brussels sprouts oh brussels sprouts now some people don't like brussels sprouts but i love them and steve loves them as well so we we have eaten so many brussels sprouts interesting i wonder if in other countries watching us whether they have brussels sprouts as a vegetable <laughs> yes because uh, I've got one in the uh, in the I nearly said in the oven in the fridge we could we could bring one and show people what a Brussels sprout looks like. I think many people know what a Brussels sprout looks like. If you don't, let us know and I can show you. But of course, in other countries, it might have a different name. They're related to cabbages. They're like small, cab very very small cabbages. They're very small. Uh, it's like eat eating a cabbage, but a very, on a very small scale. Yes. 
<laughs> and, and they are one of the things that can that can make your your digestive system overwork, thus causing lots of. There are specific veg uh, specific vitamins in in Brussels sprouts, as as there are in cabbages. So they're very very good for you. Mm. Um, so this is one of my New Year's resolutions: is to lose more weight. I've been losing a little bit of weight, but now. I want to lose even more. So hopefully I can get rid of maybe I want to lose at least one stone, another stone in weight so I can be a little bit more slim and beautiful. Well, we've been watching those videos of us, Mr. Duncan, several years ago, and uh, we realised that, uh, you know, sadly, like everyone, we are starting to age. Yes. So we've got to do something about that because we need to remain looking young for our viewers. Otherwise, they'll all go and watch uh, new people coming along. Yes. <laughs> you know, there are lots of sexy people now on YouTube teaching English. And, and, and maybe to some people, maybe we, we just look too old. That's it, well, you see. It's one like, of does. It's like, it's like they, just, they just eat the chips and then they throw the paper away. And guess what, Steve? We are the paper that they throw away. Ah, yes, but you see, youth only has so much appeal. There's, uh, it's, it's nice to look at on the outside at something that's beautiful, but is there any substance underneath? You see, we've got years of lifelong experience that we can share with, uh, with our pupils. Uh, Mr. Duncan, don't look so sad. That's true. Whereas young people, they've got the looks, but they haven't got the experience, <laughs> the maturity, <laughs> the knowledge, the integrity. And the wrinkles. True. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's fine. We're OK. We're looking forward to 2019. We will be here every Sunday during 2019 for those who are new, because we've had quite a few new people today. So... Every Sunday, you can catch us live on YouTube. And also, some people are asking for my email address as well. So I suppose I shouldn't ignore that. So this is my email address. For those who are wondering, you can catch us at that address. If you want to send a note, a message, something nice, maybe a photograph or video of where you live, in the area you live, you can do so at that address. Mr. Steve has vanished. He's gone. He's wandered off. He's gone away. <laughs> I don't know where Steve has gone. He's just vanished suddenly. I have a strange feeling that he's going into the kitchen to get a Brussels sprout. That's what I think. Come on, Steve. Show us, show us the Brussels sprout. Would you like your own camera? Go on. Okay, a few then. people have, uh, uh, I've noticed, have asked to see a Brussels sprout. There's one. There is one. So that's the stalk end comes off. There's lots of them in a row on the plant and you pull them off and it's sort of, yes, it's like a cabbage leaf and uh, they've got a distinctive smell. They grow during the summer and they're picked to over the winter period and uh, they're just like miniature cabbages. That's mm. what, <laughs> that's, and it's from the same family of plants and you just boil them and just eat them. And uh, we like them and they're full of fibre, but they do make you uh, produce a lot of wind. Mm. Uh, they're renowned for that. But there we go, Brussels sprouts. If you've got these in your country, are they known by a different name? We would like to know. <laughs> Can I come back to the other camera? Would you like to come on the other camera now? Here's Steve. He's been busy pulling, pulling off sprouts. Somebody asked uh, about, I think it was, I can't remember who it was now, about stones. Uh, they weren't sure what stones were, that you wanted to lose a stone in weight. Yes. Do you know? I do. Oh, OK, then. A stone is, a, is, is an old imperial measurement. Uh, so that's something that we used to use in, uh, in, in uh, the UK. So Probably in other Commonwealth countries before we went metric in the 1970s. Yeah. It's a measurement of weight. It's a measurement of weight. And one stone is uh, 14 pounds. 
which is which is about about thirty kilograms. I, I I am no more sure of what stones are. So, yes, a, sto a stone. Imagine I prefer a sto yes because nowadays we tend to use kilograms. Well, well, that's it. That's what that person said. Or pounds. I remember who it was. Uh, so yes, fourteen pounds and a stone, and it's about two pounds to a kilogram. So it's about twenty-eight thirty kilograms is okay. a stone. So you want to lose thirty kilograms. Okay, then is what you want to. So lose. I want to. I want to lose about a stone because I want to lose some weight. Also, another thing. I suppose this is connected as well. One more resolution. I'm going to show some more. <laughs> French frog said I can I can juggle <laughs> but it's easy to juggle with two uh, uh, uh. can I just say that 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 is not juggling <laughs> I, know, I can't juggle another New Year's resolution for Mr Duncan daily walks well wow. so I'm going to have a walk every day now I do walk during the week maybe two or three times a week but now my plan is to have a walk every day. So I'm going to have a daily walk. So maybe in the morning when I get up or maybe in the afternoon when I have some time spare, I will have a walk maybe down the road or up a, up a hill. But that is something I'm planning to do. That is one of my New Year's resolutions. A New Year's resolution, of course, is a tradition. You would call it a tradition, uh, which is very popular in Western countries. And uh, do you know, Mr Duncan, where it originates? I have no idea. Well, well, you won't like this, Mr Duncan, because I've been talking about this uh, particular subject many oh. times. Oh, no, it's not meditation. No. Oh, OK. It's not cars. No. It's not... Um, I'm trying to think what of... What have I been talking about a lot recently, Mr Duncan? I've been pontificating and I've been... It's religion. Oh, I see. Yes. Religion, because I was starting to think that Steve had had got something from above. But apparently he's got something from below instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apparently New Year's resolutions stem... They've been around quite a long time, but they, they, they sort of stem from religious... Uh, beliefs that at the end of the year you should, uh, particularly from the Christian uh, religion, that you should. But it goes all the way back to sort of Babylonian times. That's a long time ago. That's 2,000 years before. Well, yes, it's 4,000 years ago, practically. That's, that's before last week. So they used to do it then. And uh, and then the Romans used to do it. Uh, but so you sort of at the end of the year, you're sort of taking stock of what you've done over the year and then you're making promises to your god the gods whatever uh you're promised to do something new in the new year and they used to be they used to be very much centered around improving your uh improving yourself self improvement mm. um you might want to be a better person or something like that. So that's where it all comes from, Mr. Duncan. Yeah. Uh, it comes from it comes from sort of religious beliefs. So you might also describe them as vows. So something yes. you you vow to do. So I vow to lose weight. I vow to do more exercise next year. So it, it is a kind of promise in a way, yes, isn't it? It's a promise. And, and instead of just making it to yourself, you would make it to, you know, a deity. Uh, you would make it to some something that you believed in, God or something like that. I think we've got a leak. And a leak. <laughs> we had leaks last night in the soup. <laughs> leaks. Leaks is a type of type of vegetable that grows in the ground. And, uh, well, we made good use of the chicken, didn't we, that we had for uh, Christmas? The chicken wasn't very big. We had we didn't have turkey this year. We had chicken instead. And it wasn't a very big chicken, but Steve managed to get three meals. Was it four, four. meals? Four meals. Of what was a medium-sized chicken. Yes, it wasn't a very big one. It was only a small chicken, but... It, 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 you, you you managed to, to get so much and you didn't waste any of it. I love that. I love I can't stand <laughs> wasting food. So uh, I so with that chicken, we had two meals where we, we carved the meat off 
and we had it with vegetables and gravy. And then uh, we made a curry out of out of what was on the wings and the legs. That's, that was on Friday, wasn't it? That was on the Friday. And then yesterday I put the carcass, what was left, into a saucepan, boiled it with water for a couple of hours. And uh, so all the, the goodness comes out of the bones and all the rest of the meat falls off. And then you can just remove all the bones. All, so and then you've got all the goodness of the of the rest of the chicken carcass. Mm. What well, the carcass is the sort of what's left after you've taken all the meat off. That's it. So it's the bones, but also on the bones you will find there is there are little little tiny pieces of meat. So if you boil it, you boil the carcass with an onion. And then all of the meat will come off and then you can take the bones out. Take the bones out and then you're left with all the all the bits of meat in this lovely soup. Uh, soup it's called there. And then what I then do is add a chicken stock cube. And then I added some potatoes, some leeks and some carrots. Turned it into this lovely thick soup and we had it with bread. And that's what we had last night. For four meals we got out of that little chicken. Yes, who would have thought it? So, so we've decided now every year we're not going to have a turkey at Christmas. We're going to have a, a sort of medium-sized chicken instead because it's much easier to cook. It's smaller. It fits in the it fits in the uh, uh, in the fridge. It fits in the oven, uh, and you don't waste very much because no. trouble with a turkey is when there's only two of you. You go to the supermarket to buy a turkey mm -hmm. and uh, you have to, because they have them, people are always after these turkeys. So you just arrive there at the supermarket and you have to pick whatever's there on the day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you haven't got much choice and you have to and you end up quite often buying one far too big than you actually need yes. for a family of six or something like that. So you buy this, yes. it costs you about a lot of money and then you end up wasting a lot of it that's it i think i think that's one of the things also i don't think now i'm sure people will disagree with me but i don't think turkey tastes as good as chicken i i prefer chicken so that's exactly. it we're doing that next year from now on it's chicken every christmas people are talking a lot about brussels sprouts they're one of the foods that it's like they're like it's like marmite you either love it, you either love them or hate them. Yes. They're quite sort of, if you don't like cabbage, you probably won't like Brussels sprouts. A lot of people don't, <laughs> a lot of people don't like to eat sprouts. The live chat is very busy. Would you like to have a look, Steve? I would. Let's go back a little bit and see what people are talking about. The other thing about Brussels sprouts oh. is, sorry, they're like what you call a seasonal vegetable. So it, it, when it's cold and in, in winter, here in the UK, you don't you can't grow many vegetables, but you can grow things like Brussels sprouts because they grow during the winter okay. period. So that's why we have them at this time of the year. So there are lots of sprouts, lots of sprouts. around on the live chat. Daily walks is the reason of of my losing 12 kilograms in three months. Well done, Connell. So it sounds like Connell has been doing lots of exercise to lose weight 12 kilograms in three months that's not too bad is it that's that's yeah 12 kilograms yes that's about uh, 24 pounds because of the mistake many people make they try to lose too much weight in one go I mean I've done that in the past where I try to lose too much weight but of course there are two bad things about that one is it might have an effect on your health and two you can become a little obsessed with it so your your obsession with losing weight can take over your whole life and this happens sometimes now many people think that this only happens to women or, or girls but men can also get this anorexia really so yes you always assume that it's it's a female problem but actually it's also male as well so some men can also become anorexic. They they worry so much about their weight. So when they look in the mirror, they always think they are overweight. Well, so it, then, then they then they stop eating and go very, very thin. That's it. But but in the mirror, they still think they are fat. Yes. And that's it. Or I believe bulimia is the other one. Mm, yes. Not very pleasant. Yes. Well done, Colin. So you've lost. I've just worked that out about two pounds a week, which is what they 
say is the ideal amount to lose. You don't want to lose any more than two pounds a week or statistically it's been shown that you won't tend to keep that weight. You will tend to add that weight back on again. Mm. So, yes. Jeff says that we could uh, drink vodka in the new year. Yes, and then go driving in my new Ford Mustang. Well, Jeff mentions New Year's Eve. Yes. And quite a few people today have asked what we are doing on New Year's Eve. Ah. So normally we don't do much. We normally stay in the house. But because we live in an area that has such a good view, we can actually stand outside the house and watch all the firework displays as the new year arrives. So we can watch everyone letting off, setting off, launching their fireworks. <laughs> Do you know, Mr Duncan, what is the success rate, the average success rate for people uh, wanting to set themselves New Year's resolutions? Didn't Maybe you say, we'll wait until... Uh, oh, I thought well, you mentioned it already. Have I? Right, yes. OK. Wasn't it 21%? It's less than 20 percent, less than 20 percent stick or continue with their New Year's resolutions. So not many people succeed. If you look at the st statistics of that, uh, most New Year's resolutions fail. Uh, so what else have we got here? Beat uh, Beatrice says I need to gain weight. Please tell me what to do. Oh, that you got an easy job there. Putting on weight should be easy. It's the opposite of losing weight. Eat more and take less exercise. I think it's safe to say that losing weight is much harder than than gaining weight. You used to have a problem with not having enough <laughs> weight. <laughs> when I was young, I was I was so thin. Mm. I was I was like a matchstick, and and I couldn't put weight on. However much food I ate, I used to eat food all the time. And my mum used to take me to the doctors and he, he, the doctor would say, it's just a very high metabolism. So when, when Duncan eats, he, his body burns the calories straight away. So the energy is not stored. So when I was a child, I was so skinny. I was very thin. But the problem was I was also very tall as well. So I, I look very strange when I was young. Mario Perez is new and wants some applause. Oh, hello, Mario Perez. Is it your first time? OK, then. In Venezuela. Ma Mario, you can have some applause and also some fireworks as well, because the new year is just around the corner. Well done, Mario. Oh. <laughs> Boom. Ernesto. Ernesto says, come to the south of Italy and you can taste the best dishes ever. For example, panzerotto. Oh, well, yes. Italian food, of course, we would we would love that. Yes. So we would love to come to the south of Italy. The same rule applies to everybody who said, will you visit our country? Yes. We will if you uh, pay us. Yes, this is <laughs> give the, us the money to go. This is the agreement. <laughs> This is the agreement. We're joking. So we will go anywhere, anywhere in the world, but you have to pay for the airfare, the hotel, and don't forget it has to be a five-star hotel. Not none oh, of that. Yes. None of that backpacking. I can't do that at my age because I've, I've got, I've got, you know, sciatica. I've got, I've got an aching arm, and a, and, a, and a, I've, got, I've got a very sort of painful neck. So I have to have a very nice, comfortable bed something very comfortable to lie on at night. So definitely, definitely no backpacking or hostels. It has to be five star hotel and maybe maybe business class on, yes, the, on the plane. Definitely. I oh, think, yes. Yes, I think business Minimum. class. I've, I've never flown business class on a plane ever. And I, that, I, I've always wanted to just to see see what it's like. So I've heard it's very nice, but I've never been business class on a plane ever. Saturino says uh, that uh, I think somebody was uh, trying to uh, was asking us about putting weight on. Mm. Uh, Saturino says eat a lot of Nutella. Oh, Nutella. Nutella. Yes. I don't like Nutella. It's horrible. Ugh. It's full of fat. Yes. So fatty foods contain the most energy per weight. Well, isn't Nutella? It's just full of nuts. Exactly. Nuts and chocolate, isn't uh, it? Uh, yes. Nuts and chocolate. Two things that contain a lot of fat and 
tons and tons of energy. I can't think what nuts in there now. It's not almonds. Hazelnuts, I think, isn't it? I think it? it is hazelnuts. I love hazelnuts. Yes. I don't like Nutella, so um, so I won't be touching that anyway. Oh, lots of new people. We've got uh, uh, Arsalan from Kurdistan. Hello there. Uh, we've got David uh, Villela, uh, single mom from in Thailand. Barbara, lots of names I don't recognise from yes. Prague. Lots of new people. Yes. Burlop says, if you want to lose weight, eat vegetables only. Yes, that's a very good suggestion. But we, we don't eat much meat anyway. But what I'm what I'm intending to do next year is to exercise a little bit more, eat less and hopefully lose some more weight. So that's something I'm planning. That is one of my New Year's resolutions. That's what we're talking about. Do you have any more information, Steve, about New Year's resolutions? Uh, not really. I've got some information about the common New Year's resolutions that people tend to choose. OK, then. There you are can, a lot can, of common you can, ones. You can, go, you can go on your, your okay. personal camera. Common resolutions. Some of the common ones are, are all uh, re re revolved around uh, losing weight, getting healthier and uh, avoiding stress. Uh, lose weight, get fitter, save money, uh, start a hobby, uh, be less stressed, get more exercise, get more sleep. Uh, these are the common New Year's resolutions that if you there was a study all around the world about uh, what were the commonest New Year's resolutions. I think the commonest was to lose weight. Uh, but what I want to talk about when Mr. Duncan's ready, I fact I can start now. Do you want me to start now, Mr. Duncan? Uh, it's about how to actually make your New Year's resolutions happen, because it's all right to say I want to do this or this is with good intention. We will and if in the, in the days leading up to the end of the year, up to New Year, we will say I want to do this because you've got you're on holiday. You've got time to think got time to take stock of what's been happening over the last year and then you decide oh I'm going to do new things uh, in 2019 I'm going to lose weight I'm going to eat healthier take more exercise etc etc but what happens is of course you get back into your normal routine you go back to work and your normal routine that was there before the holiday period between Christmas and New Year and then you just get back into the old habits. So you go get up at whatever time, 7.30, you go to work, you come back, you get your tea ready and then you maybe make some phone calls and then you sit in front of the television, then you go to bed and you go to work again and you just carry on with the same routine. You might be looking after children. Uh, and it's finding the time and putting some time aside in order for you to actually do it. Now, the common mistake people make, apparently, in making New Year's resolutions is that they don't make them specific enough. So they make them a bit vague. And the, the, the human mind doesn't like vagueness. It likes something. It likes to be told what to do and it needs some very uh, precise instructions. So what apparently what they suggest in order to, to ha so you've got a resolution. I want to lose weight in 2019. But what they say is you should turn these into goals and look at them as if you were at work and you were setting goals and objectives and uh, and approach it from that direction. And then you will have a much higher chance of success. Uh, and I'm in sales, so we're always doing this at work. We get sales targets and that's a goal that you need to achieve by the end of the year. And uh, and so what you have to do is you have to break it down and decide what's the best way uh, for you to achieve this. So the first thing to do is I, I think this is a good idea and I'm going to suggest it to you now and uh, and and have a go at it and see if it's if it will be successful. So, for example, let's take the commonest one resolution. I want to lose weight and then turn it into what I call what not what I call what is called a smart 
objective or a smart goal. There we go. So you've got your resolution. I want to lose weight. But turn that into something that is going to help you to achieve it. So what does smart? What is smart? Well, we know what smart is. That's someone who's clever. But in I'm using this as an acronym. So the uh, every letter is is is, is comes from a word. Uh, so the S means specific. Uh, and it's also a mnemonic. So it's something that helps you remember something. So it's a, an acronym and it's also a mnemonic at the same time. Uh, so what does that stand for? The S stands for specific. So set a specific goal. And M stands for measurable. So it's something that you can look at now and then measure it after a period of time. And you can see if you've achieved it. Is it achievable? That's the A. Is it relevant or realistic and time bound? So, for example, if you wanted to lose weight, you would not say, I just want to lose weight. You would say, I want to lose 30 kilograms in the next three months. And therefore, that is specific. So you've narrowed it down and said you, how much you want to lose. It's measurable because you know what your weight is now and you can measure it again in three months time. Is it achievable? Could you lose 30, 30 kilograms in three months? You might think that's too much or too little. If you said I want to lose three, th 100 kilograms in three months, that wouldn't probably be achievable or realistic. So you might want to just make it a bit less. And it's time bound. So you said I'm going to do that in three months. So that's a specific goal. Uh, and then the ideal thing to do then is to write it down, because if you write something down, a goal or an objective, this cements it in your mind uh, and then re write it down on a piece of paper and read it every morning to yourself. <laughs> you probably think I'm, some, I'm not a guru on this, but uh, that's apparently what works in setting in setting uh goals or in this case setting new year's resolutions make them specific read them out to yourself and uh, you stand a much higher chance of succeeding if you stick to those rules if you google smart objectives you'll be able to read all about it and i think that's how you ought to treat your new year's resolutions where has mr duncan gone he's vanished uh so goals that's the word I use there, a goal. It's an aim, an objective, an end point. It's something that you want to achieve where you some kind of effort or work is required in order to achieve it. And of course, a goal in football, uh, that is the end point. You've, you've scored a point. So um, that's another use of the word goal, goal. Or you can, as I've already said, you can... Uh, turn your new year's resolutions and call those goals uh, and then set your smart objectives and see if you achieve them so that's what mr duncan you see uh, that's what mr duncan needs to do he needs to say i want to lose well he has done it i want to lose a stone which is about 30 kilograms mm -hmm. uh, and but what what period of time mr duncan do you want to lose that over well I'm hoping to lose this weight over the spring. Can I come so, back? so by the time summer arrives, I'm hoping that I will be look lovely so I can wear my lovely bikini on the beach uh, in the summer. So I, I want to go to a nice sunny place by the sea and then I can rest on the beach in my lovely one piece bikini or maybe two piece bikini. And then people will come up and say, hey, hi. Do you want to come for a swim with me? And then I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't swim. So maybe that should be one of my resolutions. Maybe I should learn to swim. Well, ah, you see, that's interesting. So um, you brought up a, a, something you, you, you said to yourself, right, I want to learn to swim. Mm -hmm. But do you really want to? Because if you're setting yourself these resolutions or goals, there's no good setting yourself one where you don't really want to do it because you will have failed right from the start. I mean, you might, some people might think, oh, I should lose weight hmm. or I should stop smoking or I should take more exercise. But do they want to? Hmm. 
if you don't want to, then don't set it because what's the point? You're not no. going to achieve it if you don't really want to do it. So what you're really saying is your goals have to be realistic. Well, they have to be something that you want to do. Yes, uh, because, because the motivation has to be there. The motivation has to be there in the first place. You have to want to do it, to do it. If you don't want to lose weight, <laughs> then there's no point in saying, I want to lose weight. Yes. Because you won't do it. That's it. If you're not bothered whether you're overweight or underweight or whatever, then carry on as you are. A little bit later on, by the way, we are going to take a look at some of our Christmas presents because Steve received a big box. Do you want to see Steve's big box? Oh, here it is. So that's the big box. Now, now, who who bought this for you? Who 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 gave you this amazing present? It must be a very generous person. It was you, Mr. Duncan. It was me. So I this, was very surprised. This is the gift that I I got from Mr. Steve. Now, we are also taking a look at other things today. Do you remember, Steve, when we went to the beach? Because we just mentioned beach because that's what I'm doing next year. I'm going to lose weight and look very sexy on the beach. But do you remember when we went to the beach? I do. We went to the beach during summer 2018. So we are now in the car. We are about to leave Lake Vernoy and we are going somewhere else, somewhere quite exciting, somewhere we haven't been for a long time. Are you excited, Steve? Yes, very excited. <laughs> That's excited. So off we go. But the big question is, where are we going? Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve, but where are we? We are now on the beach. On the beach at a typical British beach scene. It's freezing cold. We're wrapped up in, in, in woolen winter clothes. The sun's out, it looks lovely, but it's actually very cold. So I've got the beach towel. And what have you got, Mr. Duncan? I have my spade oh. so I, I can dig in the sand because <laughs> we are on a sandy beach. And I have my bucket as well, my little bucket. So I can put the sand into the bucket and I can build a little sand castle. Here. And I've got the same, matching. I've got the blue ones, you've got the red ones. So, are we going to start building sand castles, Mr. Duncan? I'm all excited. I think Mr. Steve is very eager. Even though the wind is blowing, it is quite windy on the beach. We are very close to the sea. We are on the Welsh coast in a place called Aberdovey. It's very nice normally, but unfortunately, it's a little cool and quite windy. What else have you got there, Steve? I've got a beach towel. Yeah, Mr. which I'm now using to keep warm with. Do you that... like do you like Steve's beach towel? It's... I'm using it as a scarf to keep warm. <laughs> so, let's start building some sandcastles.
Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. All over the UK during the summer months, people come and they visit the seaside. They go to the beach. I don't know what it is about being near the sea. The sights, the sounds, the weather, and also the fresh air. To be honest with you, there is a lot of fresh air around today because it's so windy. And look at the sea. Isn't it beautiful? In fact, I think Mr. Steve is going to go into the water for a paddle. You paddle in the water. You splash around in the sea. That splashing around in the sea has made Mr. Steve feel very hungry, so he decides to go to the local chip shop. There's nothing like a bag of fish and chips, piping hot from the fryer, with extra salt and vinegar. Mr. Steve appears to be enjoying his chips. Mmm, delicious. Do you know what this bird is? It's a seagull, a very common bird that can often be found near the seaside or on the coast. We decided to see what would happen if we threw some of the chips on the ground. Needless to say, the result was chaos. You will often see seagulls at the seaside. So our day trip to the seaside is almost at an end as we walk off together into the sunset. Ah, another lovely memory of 2018. Do, do lots of things still to come we are going to take a look at some of our Christmas presents we received this year and the big question is what was in Mr Steve's big 
box. Also, hopefully, some more flashbacks to this year. We had a lot of wonderful moments this year, so we will share some more before the end of today's live stream. Meanwhile, yes, we are live on YouTube on a Sunday. It is New Year's Eve Eve. So it's the day before the day before the new year. So 2019 is just around the corner. All that talk of food, by the way, has made me feel very hungry. So I'm I'm now eating some nibbles. Mr. Duncan, how is this going to help you lose weight? Twenty nine grams of fat per hundred grams, Mr. Duncan. And the uh, calorific content is 512 calories per 100 grams or 128 per handful. Mr. Duncan, I am going to confiscate these. I don't think you really want to lose weight. I suppose you could say, I was expecting you to say, well, it's not, uh, it's not the new year yet, so I don't have to start. So is that what you're going to do? You're going to stuff your face. An expression that we use, stuff your face eat a lot of food very quickly. Is that what you're going to do between now and the end of the year? You're going to eat up every high calorie snack that we have in the house. Actually, these smell very nice. I wonder what they're like. Mmm. Oh, Mr. Duncan, these are, these are very tasty. Oh, Mr. Duncan. Where have you been hiding these? I'm going to lock them away, Mr. Duncan. I will eat them because I can afford to put on a little bit, you know, slim bod as I am. I can afford... There we go, that's what you should be eating. Brussels sprouts. Oh. <laughs> You should be eating just vegetables, Mr. Duncan. Well, you shouldn't do that because if you were to just eat vegetables, you would not be getting the required nutrients that your body requires. You would not be getting protein or carbohydrates. Well, you'd get some carbohydrates, but you wouldn't get any fats. So you need to have a balanced diet, Mr. Duncan. Vegetables, a little bit of protein, a little bit of carbohydrate. What you need to do, actually, they say that people, the people that put on weight, um, they're only eating probably two or three hundred extra calories a day, which is only like a couple of chocolate biscuits or a glass of wine or something like that, a beer, a couple of beers. So you only need, you don't need to do a lot to tip the balance back. You only need to Make small changes. You don't have to make drastic changes to lose weight. People always think if you want to lose weight, you've got to make these drastic changes. You don't. If you want to lose a lot of weight suddenly, you can go on these vegetable soup diets and you can lose a stone in a month or something, but they're not very good for you. And then you do, you go, you're not establishing good habits then, which will last for a long time. You're only doing something very quickly to lose a lot of weight suddenly. And that's not very... That's no good for the long term because then you just revert back to your old habits. So you've just got to make a few changes. So say, for example, we eat a lot of chocolate. So what we should say is we will only eat chocolate at the weekend or we will only buy chocolate on Friday night instead of having chocolate three or four times a week or sometimes every night. We will only have it, say, on a Friday and a Saturday. So you've still got that treat but then you're not having it. Are you still, have you gone dumb, Mr. Duncan? You I, haven't I, said anything for a long time. I, I, I'm not listening to a word you're saying. All I'm thinking about is those lovely cheddar nibbles. I want nibbles. Give me more nibbles. We've had some good ideas, some very good ideas on the live chat. That's so, what we want. Ideas yes, from other people. Yes. Um, yes. Eat all of the junk food before the new year arrives so that's what I'm doing that's what I was doing I was I was eating all of the junk food 
so when the new year arrives there'll be no junk food in the house you see that's what I was doing I was preparing for my new year's resolution yes well the thing is though you you will be adding weight on you will just make it more difficult to uh, to lose weight you'll have more to lose in the new year uh, but there you go that's uh, there's always uh, you can't just eat vegetables there's plenty uh, of time well, Some two cats are vegetarian of course yes I know yes and vegetarians they if you look at the statistics they tend to lead healthier lives but you've got to be careful you've got to know what to do because otherwise you can you can be lacking in in certain proteins uh, if you don't know what you're doing uh, so I don't think that's necessarily the answer <laughs> Eric says that Mr Steve has a teenager's body oh thank you so much this is true he is buried in the back garden <laughs> oh Mr Duncan are you suggesting I've murdered some teenager and put him in the garden well no well. I haven't <laughs> that was a joke wasn't it Mr Duncan <laughs> of course it was yes I know thank you though thank you for the compliment uh, <laughs> Shirley in Germany says I love your videos made with nature thank you for all your wonderful lessons we will be out and about during 2019 we will be going out at the moment unfortunately because it's winter the days are short we don't have much time but hopefully we will be doing a lot more outside during 2019 so let's get up to date with the live chat Something I wanted to say about because there was some we saw an interesting program. Uh, you weren't very interested in it. I wasn't interested. It was about sort of theories about how the human brain works. It wasn't a program. It was an advertisement on YouTube. Yes, but it was somebody who'd written a book yes. based on research. So th there was some truth to it. That if you want to, that most of your programs, most of the most of the things that we do every day, I just. We don't really think about them. They're just habits, things that we do, routine things, and we don't even really think about it because we're, we've got these programs hardwired into our brains and we just carry on doing the same thing day after day, day after day, because most of the things that we learn to do, we learn before the age of seven, apparently. Uh, and uh, According to this person, it was trying to sell a book. Yes, but it was based on research. And then if you want to change something, the only way to do it is to uh, either be hypnotised <laughs> or to keep on... You've got to keep doing something for a long time. Repetition. If you want to get a new programme, something new into your brain, a new behaviour, you've got its repetition. You've got to keep doing the same thing over and over again until you until your brain thinks that this is something new that it's got to carry on doing all the time so you're t you're talking about learned habits yes that's right so if you for example are in the habit of always having a chocolate bar after you know at lunchtime mm -hmm. that's a habit that you've built up over over many years mm -hmm. so you've got the only way to break it is to stop having it and then after about 3 months uh, or, or you write something down, I do not like chocolate, I don't want to eat chocolate bars anymore, or something like that. You've got to start a new habit going. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, OK. Well, that's that's used up four minutes of the live stream. Now, Anouk Sukat says that her brother is 60. OK. Uh, he has a body like Mr. Steve's. Surely nobody else in the world has a body like mine. <laughs> I'm sure. uh, I've been practicing um, yoga for 16 years and eats everything. He isn't a vegetarian either. Hmm, interesting. Well, I, I, I don't dispute the fact that sometimes your mind is, is, is a thing that can make you either healthy or unhealthy. We all know that. We hear about it all the time in the news. Things like depression. So... Yes, your your mind can can have a negative effect or a positive effect. So I'm not saying that it's it's all rubbish. My brother is 60. Yes, Sue Cat, your brother is 60. Now don't tell us your age. We don't want to know because a lady should never say her age. Palmira says one of the unpleasant things every day and you will be 
good uh, maybe that means get rid of one unpleasant thing every day and you will be okay strange enough Eleanor Roosevelt yeah Palmyra I've got I'm going to give some sort of inspirational quotes at the end from 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 uh, authors okay and uh, she actually came up with a lot of uh, a lot of quite interesting uh, phrases. Who's that? Um, no, I haven't got that one. I thought I got it. I haven't. OK. Uh, but yes, uh, she also said, apparently, um, that... Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, that's... Let's well, move on. <laughs> brilliant. That was... Uh, that was uh, she was another, well known for her quotes. Another minute well spent. Uh, she said, no, she said uh, the, the future is um, the future is for those that believe in their dreams or something like that. OK. Uh, so she was always coming out with these inspirational quotes. Um, so thank you for that, Palmyra. Don't put off till tomorrow the thing that you can do today. Procrastination. Oh, <laughs> I don't Pro do that. I don't do that very often. I used to do it a lot when I was a teenager. Oh. Procrastination. Oh, procrastination. Yes. Oh, yes. I thought you, I thought you said something else. Yes, I know you did. I'm going to swear less next year. Now you might not realise it, but sometimes I I do swear. You not don't. not not online, so not on the internet, not during the live streams. But sometimes when I'm talking to you, or if I get a little annoyed about something, I will swear. So the, here's another thing I'm going to do less of. I'm going to try and swear less. I don't hear you swear even <laughs> off off air. Yes, I do. Of course I swear. Don't you ever hear me swear when I get a little but annoyed? It's only me that can hear it. Yes, but it's still still a bad habit. So I'm going to swear less, less rude words. So I will I will have a lovely clean mouth. No rude words will leave my lips eric says that uh, he lost weight this year but people were saying asking whether he was sick oh okay uh because of course if you lose weight people think that some that you could be ill well quite often if you are seriously ill you will you of course will lose weight if That's you have it. if you have a serious illness like cancer you, you quite often will lose weight and there are lots of other diseases that will cause you to lose a lot of body weight. So, yes. Mm. So that that's true. I think if you suddenly lose weight, also if you lose too much weight suddenly, you, you might find that you look very unwell, very mm. gaunt. Oh, I love that word. Gaunt. Gaunt. It means that the bones in your face stand out. And, and your face looks very hollow. You look very gaunt. This is the trouble, of course, when we keep talking about losing weight all the time. We seem to be spending a lot of time talking about that. But often when you lose weight, particularly as you get older, your features, you can, you can, uh, you can start to look old because your skin starts to sort of drag in. And uh, if you want to look younger as you get older, sometimes it's... You don't want to lose too much weight because all your skin starts to hang. Yes. I think uh, I'm getting a bit of that now. I think I'm very aware that the skin on my face is becoming a little a little looser. So <laughs> because it, it's all starting to go sort of downwards. And that's what happens when they get older. Anyway, Gravity. Th this isn't this isn't very happy. Anyway, this is yes. We're supposed uh, to be talking about happy things. Now I have a lovely memory of this year because this year of course for those who like sport this year was a very big year because there was the world cup this year yes. and steve do you remember when we went into the garden to play football i do yes well for those who didn't see it here it is right now
from Much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon. This is Live English. It sure is Sunday fun day time to improve your English listening with Mr. Duncan and also Mr. Steve as well. Yes, we are going to show you some of our Christmas presents, but I believe you have a couple of words to show. Oh, yes. People are getting impatient. They want to see. Well, what our, OK, our, uh... I'm going to show you one of my Christmas presents. Go on then. OK, here here is one of the things that Steve bought for my lovely Christmas box. And here it comes right now. Now, this is something that Steve has been worrying about for a very long time. He's been very worried about me getting cold here in the studio when I'm working at the computer because my feet become very cold. So Steve has very kindly given me some slippers. Oh, Mr. Duncan, some lovely warm slippers. Don't they look lovely? People always receive slippers for Christmas. It is a bit of a cliche, but to be honest, I love I love these slippers. They are so cozy and warm. So now I wear those when I'm sitting at the computer doing my editing. So yes, because the floor around your computer is like a hard floor. There's no carpet there, so your feet get very cold. And I thought, mm, I want to get you something to keep your feet warm, Mr. Duncan. And there it is. There it is. There they are. A pair of slippers to keep my feet warm on those cold days when I'm busy in here working on my English videos, which, of course, I will be during 2019. There will be lots of new stuff to come your way next year. So I hope you enjoyed that. But the big question is, of course, Steve, what was in your box? Mr. Steve's big box. There it is. Now, mm. you had no idea what it was, did you? No idea at all. I've never received such a large present. It's a very big one. I've never received such a large present and I couldn't believe that you how you managed to hide it from me. Uh, for all those many weeks leading up to Christmas, but yes. somehow you did. Yes, I, I bought this a long time ago and I had to keep hiding it from Steve because it's pretty big. So because it's so large, I, I, I didn't know where to put it. But on Christmas morning, Steve opened the present and it was something rather special, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Do you want to have a look? Go on. OK, here it is. Now, imagine Steve's surprise when he opened, when he opened the present and saw this. No, not the jacket. That's Steve's work jacket. This. <laughs> what is it, Steve? It's a, a set of drawers uh, that I can have in my office to store things in yeah. because the one I currently have has broken. And uh, I like this, like the colours in that, Mr. Duncan. Mm. It's a big surprise. I would never have guessed. Uh, and it's not very often you surprise me like that, Mr. Duncan, no. but you did this year. So I got a set of drawers for Mr. Steve so he can put all of his work, his papers, his receipts, all of his little bits of office stationery. So everything can go in this set of drawers. So I always like to buy presents that are useful. In, in fact, Steve, I think you're very similar. So you always like to buy something that's useful. I just realised they would make a smaller version of that would make a very good bedside cabinet. Ah, yes, that you ah. could put those by the bed. In fact, they do smaller ones. So they do smaller ones. So, yes, you could use those also as a as a bedside cabinet. Yes, I think we've just solved another problem, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> what problem is that? Uh, <laughs> Come on. Well, uh, besides, uh, people normally have, don't they, by their bed? You're not gonna, side you are really not going to share this information with people. Let's are you? not share it. then. Don't share that information. It's rather embarrassing. Uh, if, if Steve tells you what I think he's going to tell you, I will never be able to show my face on the Internet ever again. So we, we will keep that a secret. Whew, that was close. So that's the, the present that I got for Steve. It was a very big one. It, it was. Oh. And uh, but the thing is, Mr. Duncan, I've got to tidy out my entire office now because I want to have a nice like I think this is something else that lots of people do. 
as New Year, sort of just before New Year, is to yes. tidy everything up. Clean. So that you start the new year with everything nice and clean and in, in a nice order, organised. And my office has got messier and messier as the, as, as the year has gone on. But it's going to be a big task to clear it all out. I've started, Mr Duncan, uh, because often starting something is harder uh, than keeping it going. Yes. Uh, but yes... Well, I'm doing the same thing here in the studio. So as soon as we finish today, I'm going to take some of the studio to pieces. I'm going to completely move everything. I'm, I'm going to vacuum. I'm going to clean. I'm going to sweep. I'm going to dust. So everything, everything in the studio will be nice and clean for next year. Good idea. Anything Ed. else? Any other presents that you received, Mr Duncan? Oh, I received... I received, Off, you know, somebody special. I received something very nice here from an admirer. Some aftershave. Some aftershave to put on my face. So when I have a shave, I can put some of this on and it smells gorgeous. Better than normal. Yes. Ooh, that's powerful stuff, Mr. Duncan. It's very powerful stuff. It's, it's, it has a very... Oh, very strong smell. So so that's one of the things Steve bought for me. In fact, you bought lots of things for so me. So one present for me, two for you so far. OK. What else did I buy you, Mr Duncan? Steve bought me some new underpants. You ought to see the state of his old ones. That's not true. They're full of holes. I, I have lovely underpants, but I just don't have many of them. So sometimes I have to wear them for about two weeks. And, and they can they can actually stand up on their own. They're like cardboard. So they're some some lovely underwear to wear. Are you going to model them for your uh, for your uh, pupils, Mr. Duncan? I could put them on now if you want. Please don't. It might I be a bit embarrassing. I could try try my underpants on. Would you like to see me try my underpants? No. Oh, so uh, that's so far one present for me, three for you. I know. I seem three to... for you. Yes. Uh, anything else that you might have received, Mr. Duncan? Um, okay. From somebody special in your life. So we have aftershave. I have slippers. I have new underwear. Oh, something else, Mr. Steve bought for me. This is something that's very useful indeed. Oh yes, thank you, Mr. Steve, for for buying this as a Christmas present for me. Now, this is something that's going to be very useful when we go outside with the mobile phone. This is a little power bank. So this will charge or keep my mobile phone charged so we don't lose the battery power. So that is one of the presents that Steve gave to me. I was overwhelmed. And in fact, we used this, didn't we, on Boxing Day? We did. So we actually used this gift on Boxing Day during my live stream and that allowed the mobile phone to stay fully charged during the whole live stream. In fact, I worked out that we could probably use that for about three hours non-stop wow. on the mobile phone, if not longer, maybe longer. So I hope you enjoyed that. Some of the gifts, some of the presents that... Steve bought for me, and I bought Steve one present, but one big present, you see, something very useful. And of course, the other gift is me. You have me for another year. How delightful, Mr Duncan. I'm so overwhelmed with joy. That is a priceless gift. You can't put a price on that. I could. I could put a price on it. Well, I'd rather you didn't. We were asked <laughs> Only if we could show the word gaunt. Gaunt. If you lose too much weight, you might become very thin and your face will look gaunt. So there it is. Drawn drawn in. For those asking, the word is gaunt. And I've got a few words here and I've got some inspirational quotes. Are we going on the Steve Cam? I think so. Steve Cam. Tell me when, Mr Duncan, I want this to look seamless. So get ready to turn around uh, with, with your dramatic professional intensity. Now. Was that good? <laughs> Very good. Take stock. There we go. So take stock. Say you had a shop and uh, you did a stock take. 
you would you would go around your storeroom and you would see what you got in stock and you would note everything down and then you'd know exactly what you got in stock, what things you had in your shop to sell. Now, if you take stock of your life, it means that you, you look at everything that you've got, everything that you've achieved, uh, and you see where you are at this particular point in time. And people do that at this time of the year. Take stock of your life. You know, where are you? What, are you, what job are you doing? Uh, all that sort of thing, everything in your life, you look at it, you take stock and then you decide from that point what you want to do, where you want to move forward uh, from there. So taking stock of your life, just adding up everything that you've got in your life, where you are now, not necessarily materialistically adding up, but maybe just the things that you've achieved so far, taking stock. Now, if you want to change uh an aspect of your life and perhaps you're not you've been a bad person or you haven't been behaving very well you might want to turn or take turn over a new leaf turn over a new leaf so uh, that means to stop doing something bad or harmful and start behaving or doing something in a better way for example I've been mean to everyone at work so from now on I'm going to turn over a new leaf and treat people better. So it just means that uh, you've suddenly realised that uh, you haven't been doing something right or you've been bad or not behaving well and you decide to turn over a new leaf and start being a better person. Uh, you might decide in 2019 that you want to kick a habit. Kick a habit. That means you want to stop doing something uh, bad or stop doing, yes, yeah, stop doing something bad. Smoking, for example, eating too much chocolate, um, anything that you do which you don't like that's a habit, a bad habit like smoking, drinking, uh, eating too much. Uh, you might want to kick that habit, which means you might want to stop doing it. Uh, so there we go. So it's like you've got that that bad thing, uh, that habit, those packets of cigarettes and you kick them with your foot uh, or you put your foot down on it and you stop doing it. So to kick a habit means to stop doing something bad. Ah, yes, but I can hear you saying, is that easier said than done? So that's a phrase which means uh, you say that phrase Easier said to done, easier said than done when you've got something to do, but in practice, you it sounds good when you say it. Oh, I'm going to stop smoking. But sometimes just saying that is quite easy to do. But the practice of actually doing it is much harder. Um, so it is difficult to stop smoking, as, as many people know who have tried. It's also difficult to lose weight. A lot of people find it difficult to, to lose weight and uh, sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, you could say, I in 2019, I want to go to the moon. Uh, and somebody might say to you, well, that's easier said than done. Uh, so you have to make plans sometimes if you want something to happen. So it's just a phrase. Oh, it's that easier said than done. If somebody says to you, oh, why don't you lose two stone in weight? And you might say, oh, that's easier said than done. Somebody might say to you, well, why don't if you're not happy with your life, why don't you uh, change your jobs and go and work for a different company? And you might say to them, that's easier said than done. Uh, in other words, you're saying uh, it's all right for you to say it, but it's actually harder to do in real life. Uh, sometimes you set yourself a goal or set yourself a task, but that task is actually probably could be beyond your capability or is you suddenly realise when you start it that, oh, mm, that's a lot more work or a lot more effort or it's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. And then that you could use the, the expression, bite off more than you can chew. So if you do something that's too difficult for you, so you might be very enthusiastic about something. You might say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to buy a house in the new year in 2019. I'm going to buy an old house uh, and I'm going to do it up and then sell it for a profit. 
Uh, but that you you if you actually then buy a house and then try to maybe it needs a new kitchen, a new roof and you want to do all this yourself, that's going to take a lot of effort. Uh, and somebody might say to you, uh, you've bitten off more than you can chew. So you've taken uh, a, a big chunk of something and you can't bite, you can't chew it all because there's too much of it. So you've taken on board a task which is too difficult for you to do. You may be able to do it next year or you may be you may need help from other people to help you achieve it. Um, so try not to do too much, I think, is the is the is the motto from that. Uh, have you ever bitten off more than you can chew, Mr. Duncan? Sometimes, sometimes I think about uh, 30 years ago, I, I bit off more than I could chew. I think I know what he's referring to. <sighs> I think we both know. Uh, when you start something, you can sometimes use the phrase, get the ball rolling. Um, and that just means to, to start something. Uh, and that actually is derived from physics, probably, because it takes more effort to start something going than to keep it going. Um, and sometimes, say you want to decorate a, decorate a room, uh, or do anything, decorate a room, for example. Oh, you don't want to do it. And you might say, come on, let's get the ball rolling. So you just tear some paper off. So just start, just do something. I think Mr. Steve's head sometimes looks like a football. See, that's what I'm doing there. Do, do, do. Hello, my name is Mr. Steve, and I like talking on YouTube. And similar phrase, bite the bullet. Oh. Bite the bullet. I've done that quite a few times. So, uh... If you were to try and bite into a bullet, that obviously would be quite difficult to do. <laughs> You'd probably break your teeth. So if you bite the bullet, it means to do something difficult. Let's bite the bullet and start decorating the living room. So let's just start doing it. Let's bite the bullet. Let's just... Something uncomfortable, you don't want to do it, but let's just start doing it anyway. And bullet reminds me of the Ford Mustang, Jeff. Why? Because there is a, a special version of the Ford Mustang called the Mustang Bullet. Oh. But spelt with an I-T on the end, not an E-T, from the, the famous film. Ah, the I, famous film, Bullet. I think it's Bullet, I-T. Uh, and you can buy a special version of the Ford Mustang called the Mustang Bullet. I'm trying to do the theme, the theme tune to Bullet. It's dark green and uh, has uh, all sorts of special features which hark back to the uh, original 1960s film. And I was hoping Mr Duncan would buy me one for Christmas, but he didn't. No. Nope. He bought me a box instead, which I'm very pleased with. I bought you a box of drawers to put all of your papers and all of your secret files in. Yes, all of the secret files secret papers maybe mr steve has lots of secret things he wants to put in those drawers hide them away from me who knows well there's no locks on those drawers mr duncan you well, could just go in there at any time no, i would never do that anyway if you want to organize yourself uh to get something going then you often say get your act together yeah get your act together so if you are disorganised and you've been talking about doing something and you don't do it, somebody might say to you, come on, get your act together. In other words, organise yourself and start doing what you said you were going to do. Mm. So, for example, you're never going to get that job, that new job, unless you get your act together. So what they mean is write your CV, start applying for interviews, things like that, start looking in the papers, uh, your boss at work might say to you, get your act together or you'll soon be out of a job. Ooh. So you haven't been performing well at work, you've been disorganised and you haven't been achieving your objectives. And he might say, get your act together. In other mm. words, you used to be doing it before, you're not anymore. So start start doing what you used to be doing. Yes. Start to, to, to do what you should be doing. Another one, another my favourite, Steve, is... is 
pull your finger out. Pull your finger out, yes. Pull your finger out. Can I come back to the other camera? You want to come to the other camera? Well, it's time to go. Well, I've got some I've got some inspirational quotes. <laughs> Well, I've got an, I've got a very inspirational four. I've got a inspirational quote. There is a clock right in front of you, Steve. I know, but I was actually doing things. I can't believe that you were surprised by what time it was when there's a giant clock just in front of Steve's face. Talking of time. Yes, this is the final. The last. Oh, the last live stream of 2018. However, there will be a new video posted on my channel tomorrow oh. as well to to talk about the end of the year which is the thing I do every single year so this is something I've been doing for the past five years so I'm going to do it again tomorrow so there will be a new video but there won't be any more live streams in 2018 this is the last one so the next time you see us we will be talking to you in 2019 when you think about it, New Year, it's it's a bit silly, really, because every day is a new year, isn't it? <laughs> if you go back 12 months, every, every year is a new year, really. Yes, I suppose it's just so. just a particular date. But you I work in these 12 monthly cycles. I always say that it's insignificant when you think about it. It's very good to have years as a, a guide to, to, to make sure your life goes on the right track. But as I always say, the universe doesn't care that it's 2019. The universe couldn't care less. It doesn't know. It just carries on with its silent process as everything moves around the cosmos. So the universe doesn't even know. Only we are aware of time and, and the fact that it's 2018 and soon it'll be 2019. But as far as the universe is concerned, there is no time. 13 billion years old, is it, the universe? Something like that, Mr Duncan, what according a, to... My mind is blown by that. It's a long time, by the way. I'm, I'm blown away. It's a long time. So Mr Steve has some inspiration, not, not perspiration. <laughs> I might have a bit of that. Inspiration. So are you going to give us some inspiring thoughts for 2019? Something okay. to help you with your New Year resolution. Want your camera? Um, can do. So I can have a sleep on the floor. And then we'll come back to you afterwards, Mr. Duncan. And cue Mr. Steve. Inspirational quotes to help you through 2019. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. Mark Twain. So, and that is true. If I look back in 20 years, all the things I said I wanted to do, I'm more disappointed about the things that I didn't do than the things that I did. It's never too late to be what you might have been. George Eliot. So in other words, it's never too late. If you've got some big goal or something you want to do, it's never too late. You're never too old to start doing something. It's never too late to be what you might have been. A very, a very smart woman. Pardon? George jo Eliot. George Eliot. OK. George Eliot was a woman. Yes, of course, Mr Duncan. Ah. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent but the ones most responsive to change. Who said that, Mr Duncan? <laughs> you, just. Charles Darwin, ah. famous naturalist. Yes. So everybody often misquotes him. He never actually said only the strongest and fittest survive. That was something that was taken on board by politicians to, 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 to make people ruthless. Hmm. Uh, what uh, Charles Darwin said is that the ones that adapt to change are the ones that survive. And you find this in work all the time. We live in a period of massive change. There is always change, new technology, new ways of working. So if you want to survive in the workplace, not just as a human being, if you want to survive at work, you've got to take on board new changes. Yes. Otherwise somebody will come along and take your job. And this is something I've had to learn because I'm not very good 
at taking on board changes. I like things to stay as they are. Uh, and uh, you have to learn that if you don't respond to change and adapt to change and new ways of working, you will become irrelevant. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. So what he's saying is that even if you fail, it's not going to kill you. Carry on anyway. But even when you are successful, you can't just stop. You've got to carry on as well. So it's the courage to continue, whether you fail or succeed. Because even if you succeed, you can't just stop where you are. Because if you stay where you are, other people will go past you. Uh, so both ways, whether you fail or succeed, you've just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and continue anyway. And the last one, when a person really desires something, all the universe conspires to help that person to realise their dream. And that's from a book called The Alchemist, written in, I think it was 1988, uh, by Paolo. I don't know how you pronounce his second name. Uh, he's Portuguese. Paolo Calo, I think, or Chalo. Uh, so in other words, when you decide you really want to do something, somehow it all happens. It just happens. Mm. And uh, that's probably... A bit of faith, I don't know, but there you go. They're my little inspirational, not mine, quotes that I've picked up off the internet. Yes. Uh, that might help you move forward in 2019. So that's your selection. That's my selection. Yes. So they're not yours. You didn't write them. I wish I could say I did. One more for me. Use my time efficiently. This is a very important one. This is one of my New Year's resolutions. I want to use my time more efficiently so I don't waste time if I have a spare moment I will find something to do during that moment I won't waste my time I won't put things off to the next day I won't procrastinate I won't keep saying I will do it tomorrow I will do it tomorrow and another bad habit of mine is I often put things off and keep putting them off and keep putting them off or I do the opposite and I don't do anything and I have to do everything at the last minute. Yes. So maybe you don't prepare or do any preparation for something and suddenly you have to do it. You have no choice because there's only a little time left. Pressure. Time yes. pressure. So I am going to use my time efficiently in 2019 there's another one here this isn't mine I don't know where this came from I think this might be from Pedro Belmont it says live stream every day <laughs> can you see that I think I think this might be, be Pedro Belmont I think so because Pedro is always asking <laughs> me to do live streams every day that's but, easier said than done Mr Duncan yes you see that's the reason why not because it's easier said than done. So I'm afraid there won't be live streams every day. But there will be live streams, of course, during 2019. It's time to go. Let's have one wow. last look. One last look at the live chat. Yes. I wonder if Matrix is going to change the name now. Because Matrix is, is called Matrix Tricks 2018. But of course, you will have to change your name, I think. You'll have to change your Roman numerals. That's interesting. Jimmy, Jimmy New Year family said uh, the social uh, Darwinist Herbert Spencer mm -hmm. was the one that first proposed the phrase survival of the fittest. Uh -huh. But it was a, a, a misquote uh, and it was a bit of a distortion of, of Charles Darwin's uh, uh, principles. Yes. Uh, and, and in fact, that often used, that was often used, in particularly in the 1980s, uh, in, in business circles mm. um, to suggest to people that it's only the only the fittest that survive and you should push everybody else out of the way. Yes. But in fact, that isn't the way to survive. Yes. So what they're saying is you have to to survive. You have to push people out of the way. You have to be a nasty person to survive. But that isn't really what it means. It's just the survival of species, not the individual person. 
So yes, it has been twisted a lot. Well, it was twisted because Darwin actually said you've got to you've got to be able to adapt. Mm. And species that survive adapt to their environment. That's and, it. And if you want to survive in your workplace, you've got to adapt and take on board new changes. That's pretty good. So lots of people saying goodbye for the for the year. Thank you, French Frog. Have a super duper new year. Thanks for your message as well, by the way, uh, concerning the French retirement age. Ah, right. Yes, we got mm. that wrong, didn't we? Yes, uh, apparently it's 60, not 55. Martha says bye, Mr. Duncan. Pedro is going as well. <laughs> it was a great live lesson. Thanks, Martha. Thanks, Shirley. Yes, please. Live streams every day. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. Don't forget, I do all of this for free. This costs nothing. So I'm always looking for donations. If you'd like to make a donation for the end of the year or maybe the beginning of the year, feel free to do so. Thanks also for your live chat donations today as well. Thank you very much for that. So Dinesh, Martha, Pedro, Victor, Jeff. There is Jeff watching in the USA. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you have a super time. And that is where we have to end. Oh, the last live stream in 2018. <laughs> it's the last live stream. In 2018. We yeah. must stress, in oh, 2018. Yes. We will be back next year, <laughs> which is the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Yes. So you don't have long to wait. Another week and we will be back. Don't forget, every Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. Have a super time, whatever you are doing. Have a great party. Have a great celebration. I think we should have some fireworks to end. So have a super new year. And from Mr. Steve. And Mr. Duncan. Happy New Year and have a great time. Happy and new year. we will also celebrate the new year of course it, it does occur at different times doesn't it it does it does so we will celebrate ours and you celebrate yours when you are ready we will see you next year have a super duper week bye and of course you know what's coming next until the next time we meet which will be in 2019 happy new year and Ta-ta for now.